In the Copacabana section of Rio de Janeiro, three generations of the same family participate in Umbanda ceremonies. Moacir, a lawyer, his daughter Beche, a school teacher, and her husband Raul, a bank clerk, have busy lives. Three days a week, they go to the Umbanda Center. Raul and his family have been participating for more than 30 years. He met Beche there, and they were married in the center. Moacir began his mediumship just 10 years ago when he gave some friends a lift to the center and while there was spontaneously possessed by his Indian guide. The central ritual activity begins when mediums go into trance through stimulation to all of their senses, from the music, incense, and intense concentration. The mediums are receiving their strong and forthright Indian guides who like to smoke cigars and drink cachaça. In Moisir's own words. There is consciousness. The Indian is completely conscious of everything we are doing or saying. He transmits through us a greater force than our own. We don't have the strength to do what we want to do. We are at the command of another consciousness within us that makes us do certain things which are not habitual, such as smoking cigars. The music is played for different Orishas, or African gods. Each medium has his or her own Orisha protector. Moasir is son of Agum, the god of war, and Beche is daughter of Yemansha, the goddess of the sea. The possessions take place in an orderly fashion. First, the chief receives his Indian guide, next the mediums with the highest status, and then the less experienced mediums and novices. Everyone is possessed by Indians simultaneously. Some people may experience visions, hallucinations, or clairvoyant phenomena and be encouraged to develop mediumship. They are told to attend sessions regularly. First, they are given a physical exam by the doctor who works in the center. If they are in good health, they are taught to go into trance. This is one of the principal induction techniques. Applying the understandings of hypnotic trance of Dr. Milton Erickson and his colleagues Hilton Lopez and David Eckstein to the trance dancing, mediums learn to function at multiple levels of awareness, liberating repressed emotional tensions and breaking habitual patterns of conscious thinking which may often lead to healing, creativity and personal growth. Together with group support and prestige in the group, these mediums make a new way of life. The awkwardness shown at the beginning disappears 
as novices practice going into trance and receiving their spirit guides. Some mothers may look askance at children participating in these activities, fearing contamination by evil influences or loss of control. On the contrary, children learn to enjoy these ceremonies. Most importantly, they learn to go into altered states of consciousness in a supportive setting, which in the future can help them if they should get sick or have a problem. The second major supernatural entity in Umbanda is the old black slave. As Benjamin, the spiritual head of this center, takes his place on a low bench, he receives his Papa Roberto, who likes to smoke a pipe and sip red wine. The old slaves are known for their patience, indulgence, and gentle fatherly scoldings. Coming out of Senor Tupan, my guide is a noise. Then a fall to the floor on the knees with one inside the other. He beats the floor twice with the hand open and three times with the hand closed. They are strong blows, even violent enough to injure them. With this, the recovery is complete. The other mediums are being transformed from Indians to old slaves. In contrast to his possession by the Indians, now Moasir is conscious of nothing, not even of the lines of people waiting to consult Papa Jose, his old black slave for diagnosis and treatment of illnesses, and for his advice on such problems as how to win back philandering mates or get jobs. I don't like to call these consultations because we are not doctors. We simply give advice as to what people should do to better their spiritual and material lives. They look for jobs and they don't know what to do with all this desperation we are experiencing today. So we raise their morale. The old blacks have this objective since they are very much allied to the material world.
While people are consulting the old blacks, the third major entity in Umbanda appears. This is the child entity equated with the Ibeji twins in the African pantheon and Saints Cosmos and Damien in the Catholic pantheon. Earlier, we saw the offerings to this supernatural entity on the beach. This other self displays the innocence and playfulness of a child and loves to eat candy. This youngster enjoys his meeting with Papa Roberto with the same exuberance an American child would feel visiting his indulgent grandpa. The comforting warmth and patience of the old slaves provide solace from the stresses in everyday life. I feel that weight, such a heavy weight, that once I am on my knees, as much as I want to, I can't get up. It's like I'm carrying something on my shoulders. Although the possession of the old one is easy, coming out of it is a horrible thing. I think that my head will leave my body. I begin to feel weak. Now, the children are another story. They just say goodbye. With the Indian, the entrance and departure are equal. We feel tired physically, but with a rested head. I have the impression of it being a little like a catharsis, you know, you get everything bad out and bring within a, a great deal of peace and tranquility. Often advice can be offered and be followed with less resistance during the possession by a guide. Moasir can interact on another level with his daughter and grandson, making him more effective in getting them to follow his wishes. Moasir has been in trance for more than eight hours, although you have seen only a small part of it. During this time, his black slave Papa Jose has given advice to hundreds of people helping to resolve their problems. The possession of the old black leaves a person very well. In spite of it being slow and difficult for the medium, it leaves that person feeling very well afterwards. Se a lua brilha no céu clarei 
The possession by the old black makes me feel very differently from the one by the Indian. In the possession by the old black, instead of feeling vibrations in the upper region, I feel it in both of my legs. My legs begin to get cold and a kind of pain comes into the knee and ends up knocking me on the floor. Upon feeling knocked down on the floor, I am nearly unconscious. I don't have the ability to reason, to talk for myself, to know people. I have a certain lack of consciousness in my work as the old black. The two processions are totally different, not at all similar. For example, with the Indian, the hand begins to tremble, tremble, it keeps trembling, 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 until I feel the vibrations and fall to the knees. With the all black, I don't feel anything. Then it seems that I turn off, then bam, bam, I'm on the floor. As for coming out of the old black, it is very difficult. It really hurts when he leaves the medium. After, you feel a pleasant sensation, as if you had come out of a sauna. You feel very tranquil, serene, without pain or preoccupation.